Hi there, how are you? It's nice to see you all. I am, uh, yeah, crazy times, huh? Pretty horrible stuff. And um, thanks for letting me do this because it is a nice distraction. I feel like I'm getting ready for a tour, getting dressed for work. And uh, it's good to put a bit of mascara on, have a reason for that. And um, provides five minutes of distraction, which is lovely. Um, and so I hope looking at some beautiful pictures is doing a similar thing for you. Uh, so today we are looking at the wonderful Battle of San Romano by Paolo Uccello and um, you had three questions for this one. What is this a picture of and which side is winning? We have two sets of soldiers, one lot on this side and a few on this side and it looks like this side is winning. How many people are dead? Just the one. Here he is. And which is your favourite helmet? You can explore that on your own. So, this is the Battle of San Romano by Paolo Uccello, painted about 14, uh, 1438 to 40. And uh, it depicts a battle scene. There were two sides fighting, the Florentines and the Sienese, and they were fighting over a port, the port of Pisa. And, as you can tell from here, Florence won. Now, who do you think is the most important person in this painting? It is this guy here with the most incredible hat, the best hat in the National Gallery collection, I would say, uh, on this white horse that really stands out and it's in the centre. And his name is Niccolo da Tolentino. He was a mercenary soldier leading the Florentine group, uh, troops. Uh, he looks very in control here and he has a very realistic face. Zoom in on it. Looks very in control, very determined. In reality, apparently, he was separated from his soldiers, surrounded by the Sienese, burst into tears crying, didn't know what to do, and uh, then was rescued by the Florentines. So not quite as in control as he looks at in this painting, which is enormous. Um, and that's a good reminder that this is a propaganda painting. This um, is celebrating Florence and a Florentine victory. So it's a good reminder in art, uh, or art reminds us, that uh, images sometimes lie. Don't always trust them. Uh, so that's what that represents. So um, this was painted by Paolo Cello. He was an early Renaissance artist um, and so he was interested in ideas around realism. But interestingly, he also was very much influenced by the uh, international Gothic style, which we saw with the Wilton Diptych. So this very decorative style, very elegant and very costly, um, and all about beauty and creating a beautiful picture. And so uh, this is expensive. So you have the trappings of the horse, there's gold decoration, that would have been gold leaf, and all of the armour that the soldiers are wearing, contemporary armour, quite realistically depicted, um, would have been covered in... Uh, silver, um, painted in silver, and so they would have been super reflective, like my ring here. So imagine it in a candlelit feasting hall, uh, and all of that light reflecting off the surface would have looked spectacular. Um, you also have this big bush here, um, so it kind of frames everyone. I have a cat saying hello. Uh, frames everyone and pushes them to the surface of the painting. So the bush is very beautiful and decorative with all the flowers and fruit. Um, but by pushing everything to the surface, you also see that influence of the classical world of ancient Greece and Rome and friezes, sculptural friezes, which were very influential on artists. But the other thing that this stylistically refers to are tapestries that would have hung on the, hung on the wall. And they were the most expensive item of art in your household. Um, and so you can see that artists might have wanted to copy tapestries because it would have given a sense of wealth um, uh, to the image, to the painting. So you have this decorative aspect, in, in, influenced by international Gothic style, and um, you also have this realist aspect as well. So not only is the face a fabulous portrait, um, but you can also see Uccello playing around with something called perspective. Um, and what artists were doing in the early Renaissance period, in the 1400s, was trying to find a way to, you know, always create this illusionistic uh, depiction of three-dimensional space receding off into the distance. And um, so here Uccello is showing us that he understands linear perspective. Sorry. That he understands linear perspective uh, by, here's an image I did earlier, linear perspective was a mathematical system, cat is on my paper, uh, a mathematical system by which you could create this realistic illusion of three-dimensional space. So before you started painting, you would have a vanishing point on your horizon line, and then you'd draw lines of 
regular intervals out to the edge of your canvas and then you'd arrange figures and objects within those lines making them look progressively smaller as they got closer to the vanishing point. And so here if you look at the lances pointing into the painting uh, they all meet uh, you could do it at home, print it off and draw with a ruler, draw lines with a ruler, somewhere around the head of the horse. Uh, and so Paolo Cello was showing us that he had an idea of linear perspective. Now, he doesn't carry it on because the decorative effect was more important. So, oh, jeez, cats. Um, uh, so he puts the bush in the middle and then has this kind of more intuitive perspective with things getting smaller and wavy lines leading your eye back into the distance because he didn't want that very strict effect of linear perspective which you get in this fabulous painting by Carlo Crivelli where all of the lines lead you back to a little grate at the end of the, the pathway here and they all meet there but it's much more formal, much more severe as a style and Uccello was not interested in that. So, is that everything I wanted to say? Mm, yeah. This is the Battle of San Romano, a series of three. Look them up, one in the Uffizi, one in the Louvre, one in the National Gallery. So go and visit it when things are open again. And uh, we shall move on to our next painting. We're going to leave the National Gallery and go to the amazing Hampton Court Palace to see one or some images from one of the most incredible series of paintings that really is unknown in England and should be much more well known. Mantegna's Triumphs of Caesar, which were painted in the late 1400s. We're going to travel to the classical world. So I'll put a link to this image uh, in the text. Um, and uh, there are lots of images in this series of paintings. I'd like you to count how many people there are, more or less. Uh, how many classical sculptures can you find? And what are the brightest colours? And we'll find out more about the Renaissance and the classical world next time. Uh, take care. Stay safe. Stay sane. See you soon.